So there's all kinds of gnarly stuff around here. We've got some cow pee on the step. Right, shoes back on. And you know when you're feeling a bit sensitive, strong smells are really intense. Is that your go? <laughs> in Jaipur and are on our way to Hawa Mahal. I don't know that I was expecting such a massive city. This is the biggest city in Rajasthan and it is, well, it's mental, just like most big cities in India that we've been to. And after the kind of peace and tranquility of Pushkar, which we'll talk about a little bit later. 80% of Hindus believe without question that there is a God. Yeah, you need to take some adjusting. But anyway, we're in the Tuk Tuk, we're on our way. I'm excited to see Jaipur. It looks absolutely beautiful in all the pictures. And there's lots to see. Let's do it. Let's do it. The pink city. So Jaipur, um, when I was growing up, there was an Indian restaurant in the town that I grew up in called Jaipur. Um, of course, you get to India and it's called a Jaipur. Uh, and the gates of the pink city are just in front of us. They basically have the entire town, the old town of Jaipur, is painted totally and entirely in pink. Love it. So we had about a two and a half hour taxi journey. Well, actually it was about three and a half hours by the time we got here, wasn't it? From it Pushkar was, was to Jaipur road. this morning. The traffic was just like back to back. Um, and I said to John, the way I think I would describe Indian roads is like a tapestry of threads, but all the threads are moving in loads of different directions. Or imagine a tapestry stitched like the most complex drawing you could imagine. And all of those threads are on the move. That's how they drive here. Somehow it works. I sort think. Of. <laughs> <laughs> the boy that can sleep anywhere. Honestly, Krishna has fallen asleep in some of the most remarkable places. Tuk Tuks are a firm fave, apparently. Anyway, thankfully we have a really handy carrier and it's very easy to just put him on my back and he stays asleep and we may even have lunch with just one child to end today. You can really see the fumes rising from the cars in front of us. Yeah, it's one of the horrible things about travel at the moment, isn't it? The pollution is heavy. It's really heavy. Oh and um, you can see it as you're arriving you know, into the city. I said to the driver today, oh gosh, really foggy in front of us. It's not fog, it's pollution. You can over these cities see these big black clouds in pollution. We're so fortunate to live where we do because it's it's just it's gnarly, it's not nice. You know, it, it never used to be like that either. I remember coming through these these roads um, in the early 2000s and it was it was quiet. You know, these were dusty cities. They were busy, but they weren't busy, busy. Not like this. Um, but what it, what it does mean for us as, as a family is we are definitely spending less times in the city um, than we would like to. I'd love to spend you know four or five days exploring Jaipur, but we, we've got two, two young boys who've got very young lungs and hanging around in this kind of pollution for too long just doesn't seem very fair. We had it, what, two days in Mumbai, three days in Udaipur. Yeah. And they both got really poorly. So big runny noses and all that kind of stuff so um so we'll do we'll do a couple of couple of nights here and then we're off to agra and then after that it's countryside pretty much for the rest of the trip great We're gonna have a change of plan, I think. It's very, very busy, and like anywhere, it's always better to go in early in the morning because it's not so crowded, especially with the kids. So we're gonna come back in the morning, I think. Go have a wander around, I think. 
and look around and maybe go towards the palace, have a look down there, see what's what. Um, and then go, because the thing about this place is it's so cool, so special. I don't want to be battling with um, with a whole bunch of other people to to take a photograph or have a look around. So this will do. Huh? This will do. Food. Food. Let's Samosas. go in. Yum, yum. All right. I see some samosas there. Four samosas and uh, what? Catch katori. Catch katori. Recommended by the the restaurant owner. Yeah, and a plate of fries is 165 rupees. One dollar sixty-five. Yeah. Yes. If you ever come to India, do definitely 100% go and try the, the samosas. Yum, yum. Can you talk? Yes. You should try this, you would really like it. Is it nice to yeah. do? Yum, yum. Okay, we're just waiting for the fries to come so I so can. Uh, to, it shouldn't be more than a few minutes. Mm. Very good, eh? Yum, eh? Oh. It's not like overwhelmingly hot, but you know when your mouth like can't quite taste anything else now because it's just burning hot meat. Oh, right. Something's really got me. So for soya, they've even spiced his chips for him. They are a little bit spicy. They've got some pepper over the top of them. Soy doesn't seem to mind. Crusoe, on the other hand, every now and then he'll eat something that's a bit spicy and he'll num num, don't like it kind of thing. But um, soya eats everything. Don't you, buddy? How do I make it stop? The spiciest thing you've ever eaten? No, not ever, but since we've been here. Okay. Do I go in for Are you drowning it on purpose? <laughs> that's it. So, okay, talking about glutton for absolute punishment. It's worth it. Thank you very much, thank you. Delicious, really, yeah, really good. Someone's awake in the back here. Somebody's just woke up, hello Crusoe. Wander towards the palace. There's a shop there I want to check out. Okay, let's go. I think I read it in a blog where somebody said India is where life spills onto the streets and it really couldn't be more true. Just stepped over somebody having their like moustache trim. Wow! That's amazing having their moustache trim on a blanket on the street in the bus stop. It just like it all happens just wherever it can. This is magnificent. <laughs> Right, so the place we're headed, City Palace we're also going to come back to in the morning, but before we do that, no, I'm all right, thank you very much. Before we do that, I want to go down here and try our first kulfi, which is like an Indian ice cream. It comes in a small little stick. No, thank you. Krusa, would you like an ice cream? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Ice cream. Let's go get an ice cream. Can you say kulfi? Cool. That's it. Two plant. Okay. There you go, buddy. Say thank you. Thank you. How's it taste? That tastes like condensed milk. Is it? Like sweet? It's not over sweet, but it does taste like condensed milk. Crusoe, how does it taste? Is it good? Is it good? Do you like coffee? Cheers. Love it. Soya, how does it taste? Boy. Um. Happy forever, buddy. Happy forever. All right, this is a little bit quieter, isn't it? Well, it's horses. I don't think you can blame that horse for that smell. Well, yeah, but it's definitely the smell of horses. It might also be a few cows. So we're coming 
across the road from me is a whole bucket ton of pigeons, a few monkeys, a few goats, one of whom is wearing a jumper. Actually, let's go and look at the jumper. <laughs> That's very cool. Wow. animals this is the place to be isn't it everybody loves an animal there's probably a monkey god a goat god and a pigeon god yeah that's probably why they all get fed as well they are very friendly monkeys buddy they are super friendly aren't they you say hello goat madness the whole thing love it And the moving tapestry threads I spoke about earlier when it comes to it, Indian traffic is everything from rickshaws, tuk-tuks, goats, horses, camels, cows, cars, buses, lorries, goats with jumpers on, you name it. Is that your goat? Yesterday, this, in, this exact same street yesterday was chock a block filled with people. Got a couple of dogs trailing us. One of the left right is having a look. Fastest dog I've seen. <laughs> they, I, they're delighted with themselves. Like, very friendly. Hello, buddy. <laughs> you wagging your tail. Love it. So over the next few days, we are going to be seeing some of the incredible architectural wonders of India with the pièce de résistance at the end of this episode. So stick around. But well, it starting, might be in the next episode, actually. Well, it might even be in the next mm. episode. Well, stick around either way. Anyway, we're going to start with this, Hawa Mahal, which was built in 1799 AD by Maharaja Pratap Singh. Oh, I'm excited. We definitely did the right thing coming back early, didn't we? We did, yeah. Yesterday it would have been hectic busy. Yeah. Let's do it. How cool is that? Look at it. We go that way, look, where it says entrance. Can you see where it says entrance? Are there dragons in there, Mum? Probably. No, no dragons. What? No dragons. Hey, we're going up the stairs, but there's not even stairs. That's funny, isn't it? I think we should start at the top, shouldn't we? Yeah, let's go right to the top. Well, we might be the first people at the top today. I. I'm having to duck down at the moment. How are you doing back there, Sawyer? Are we at the top? We're at the top. Brilliant. Is it 
Betty's too scared to come up here. <laughs> Woo! Because it's really, wow, really high. So I've just been reading about Hal Mahal and what a magical place. It's known as the Palace of the Winds and it was built by the Maharaja for his wife as basically a beautiful viewing platform because in those days the royal women weren't allowed to roam on the streets freely and so they weren't able to kind of go and be a part of it so it has i think it's 953 of these tiny little windows all around the front part and they were all there for the royal ladies to sit and look down at the streets and the bustle of life without being seen themselves also, the reason that there's that ramp going up instead of steps is because the women were so heavily dressed and like kind of laden with jewels that they found steps really difficult to walk. So they've got like a, a ramp because it's so much easier. And on the third floor, the name of the third floor translates directly to the weird room. And it was where the Maharaja used to go to take refuge from his title and he would close the doors and be by himself and he would write poems and write songs and music, all dedicated to Lord Krishna, his deity. And the reason it's called weird is because it was really unusual for somebody to seek isolation in that way, in that time. And what makes the Amber Palace particularly special is that it's all blue, completely blue. No, it's not. <laughs> there was a time, folks, that that would have definitely worked. All right, let's go to the Amber Fort that isn't blue. Let's do it. Ready, Crusoe? Yeah! This, this fellow is called Roshan, which yeah. means coming from the darkness to the light. Love it. Roshan is going to be our guide. Okay. 400 so rupees. So it's four euros to guide us around and tell us some stuff. Basically, one of the things I never used to do was take a guide, but since being with Tara, who is insatiably curious about everything, <laughs> um, and no longer believes that the Amber Fort is blue. Um, well, we take we a, have a guide. Around. I've learned that John, on all his travels over the years, basically just used to wander around aimlessly, not knowing anything about anything at all. Um, now we, of course, have Google, but it's way much more fun and you get so much more from it if you have a guide. Um, so, yeah, delighted. Should we build one of those on the farm? <laughs> wow, look at that. Beautiful. So, the elephant riding is a funny old thing, isn't it? It's um, one way that you can get to Amber Fort here is to ride an elephant after the entrance. Something that's obviously been done and used in these parts of the world for centuries is domesticated elephants and elephant riding. But the ethics of it, to me, don't really sit all that well. So we won't be riding elephants in India. Like with everything in India, the elephants are very colorful too. My, my feelings on elephant rides are a little bit different from Tara's. I'm not so worried about it, to be honest. But I understand the other side, definitely. I understand why, why people wouldn't want to do that. Um, Mama, I'm going to ride on the elephant. But like Tara says, I don't think we'll be doing it. But I'm not offended by it. I, 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 in fact, I think it's I'm lovely to see the elephants here. You know, it's kind of fun to see them walking around. Oh, such a complex issue. For me, it's really black and white. For John, it's a bit gray. I know this is gonna spark a whole load of comments. So I don't even know that we'll include this in the video, to be honest, because I'm sure a load of you will be completely deeply upset and outraged. And others of you will have had experiences on travels where it's been the best thing you ever did. So maybe we leave it there. Um, 
if all animals could be living happy and free in the world, the world would be a happier place. But it's not the world we live in, folks. Sad, but true. Right, we've made it inside. Last thing I'm going to say on it, my day is definitely better because I saw an elephant. Definitely. They've got this magical, mystique, wonderful thing about them that just infects everybody with a big smile. You know, what's travel all about? It's about making you ma making memories. It's about smiling. It's about experiencing. It's about smelling. It's about all of these things. I've just made a video clip of my eldest son and my wife walking behind elephants down a road past the Amber Fort in India. That's amazing. That's just enough, isn't it? Like that one sentence, it's just enough. You know, whatever side of the debate about elephants you sit on, it's just cool, really, really cool.